cataractcoach.com with a dense white cataract. The center of the nucleus certainly is very opaque, but look at the periphery right at the iris border. There's a little bit of a red reflex coming through. That tells me that the cortex in this eye is probably not liquefied, that the opacity is due to nuclear sclerosis. Tripan blue dye being put in the eye. Now we'll dilute it down with some preservative-free anesthetic. Important to note that this is likely not an intumescent cataract, so we're not worried about milky fluid coming out. We're not worried about the Argentinian flag sign. Dispersive viscoelastic being placed in the eye, coming across the eye and injecting. We want to do an exchange, so as the viscoelastic comes in, the blue dye comes out. That looks good. So since we're not worried about having an intumescent cataract, let's go ahead and make the main incision here. We can do a capsulorexis as normal. The ink marks at the 180-degree meridian, which is also where the patient has against the rule of stigmatism. Nice single plane made with a diamond, taking our time to make it exactly the tunnel length we want. That looks perfect. We use capsulorexis forceps. No need for a cystotome. I'm going to make our capsulorexis here. Starting in the center, and we're going to start there, go counterclockwise, aim for about a 5 or 5.5 millimeter diameter capsulorexis. Important to move efficiently here, don't waste time. Even though there wasn't any lens milk, you can still have some posterior pressure from a swollen lens, and we don't want this to radialize, so we'll just get this done in an efficient manner. That looks good. Balance salt solution on a 27 gauge blunt cannula. We'll do some hydro dissection here. There's a fluid wave going across, tap the center of the nucleus, another fluid wave, another tap, and let's try rotate. It rotates beautifully. So that was good, efficient hydrodissection. A touch more dispersive viscoelastic to protect that central endothelium. And we are ready for our phaco probe. We're using a high vacuum, at least 400 millimeters of mercury, high flow, 40 cc's per se a minute. Dig the chopper in, there's the phaco probe, two halves. You notice it doesn't quite separate. This lens is fibrous and dense, and the chops don't really propagate. We'll try to go around the equator. That helped a little bit, but still not fully separated in two halves. So buzz in again, and let's at least take off a quarter from that piece. There we go. We'll take this first quarter off. Again, the phaco power modulations are helping us limit the total amount of phaco energy placed in the eye. We'll try to bring this piece up here. Not quite getting it, it's still attached, so let's rotate a little bit. And we can go around the equator and chop off a quarter that way. So we'll take this piece down, and we've basically removed at this point about half of the cataract nucleus. Half remains. Let's rotate it just a little bit to get it into good position. Buzz in, bring the piece up, and we can further sub-chop. And just take the rest of the nucleus down. It should go down pretty easily. There is some epinuclear cataract material, which we can aspirate out here. Notice the chopper in the safe, protective position, not allowing the bag to come forwards. Switch over to the irrigation aspiration probe. We can tell right now there's a little cataract chip, a nuclear chip, stuck in the paracentesis. So I should take the spatula in my second hand, there it is, so that we can aspirate and push these pieces down the port. There we go, taking out these last few pieces. Very safe to remove these tiny pieces with the IA probe. Of course, it has that plastic polymer tip, which, if it contacts the poster capsule, will not pose any issues. As opposed to the FACO probe, the FACO probe, of course, has a metal tip which could puncture the capsule. Cleaning up the cortex material here, we'll go all around towards the lens equator, coming centrally, being gentle. There's a balance here. Just removing the white cataract alone improves the vision incredibly so. There is some sub-incisional cortex you can see. It's a little bit difficult to remove. And that's okay. We can actually put the lens in first and use that to do two things. The new lens, as it goes in the eye, will protect the posterior capsule and also help loosen up that sub-incisional cortex. So we will get that out. A little viscoelastic being placed in the eye, filling the capsule bag. Note we went in through the paracentesis just to prevent the eye from collapsing. That's a nice good fill. Lens is going to be a single piece acrylic lens. 
We deliver the lens in the capsular bag. We start delivering, making sure it goes under the nasal capsular rexus. That's great. And we now we'll use our chopper to dial the rest of the lens in. Rotating the lens is what's going to help it loosen up any of that cortex. Here we're going to rotate counterclockwise. Now when the haptics are still folded up, it's okay to rotate counterclockwise. Once the haptics unfold, the lens is much easier to rotate clockwise. That looks great. Notice the position of the lens is going to allow us to access that subincisional area. So I probe going in the eye. First thing, go ahead and remove this viscoelastic here. And we may have already gotten out that subincisional material. Putting the lens in the center, making sure we have good overlap of the capsular axis. And the lens starts to unfold quite nicely. Just about done with the case here. Again, we want to remove all the viscoelastic so we don't get an IOP spike in the post-op period. If you do get a pressure spike in the post-op period, in most cases, I recommend not tapping the paracentesis, just giving the patients appropriate treatment. Sealing up the incisions, that looks great. And we'll seal up the paracentesis as well and get the IOP where we want it. So there's the IA probe. There's a little piece of nucleus or cortex rem remaining there. We'll get that out. Much easier to do this now than have to come back tomorrow or to deal with prolonged inflammation. So again, more sealing of the incision, back and forth, moderate degree of, nu of, of hydration there of the cornostroma. Center up the lens, get the pressure where we want it, and that's basically the end of the case. Thank you for watching.